Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris here. I've been busy freshening up some of the content on my site as well as finishing up some modules in my uh, courses. And there was one video that I was talking about Notification Center. I just recorded it and published into my course that I thought would also make a great standalone video for the YouTube channel. And just to give you a little bit of context, in the app that we were building inside of the course that looked something like this, uh, where we had this part, and we were able to write a review. And then when you put your uh, cursor into the text field or the text view, the keyboard would slide up and cover the text view. So uh, animating that whole chunk to go up and not get covered by the keyboard was something that I actually covered in a YouTube video here. Uh, in this one, iOS keyboard blocks text field. So uh, to give you a little bit of context in that video, you listen for a notification that gets sent uh, when the keyboard slides up or down. And that notification contains some info about how far it's going to slide up. And then you simply animate your constraints to slide up your view. Now I decided to expand on that and demonstrate for people in the course how to use Notification Center to not only uh, receive notifications, but to post notifications as well. And I thought that would be a useful video for the YouTube channel as well. I just want to warn you guys that in the following video, I do mention things like the delegate and protocol pattern, which I haven't covered on this channel specifically. And I do say things like in the previous lesson where we did this and that, and obviously I'm referring to uh, content in the course, but I hope that that doesn't bother you too much from the core content or the core message of the video, which is to teach you how to use Notification Center to send and receive notifications. So thanks for supporting the channel and I will get back to posting uh, more regular content soon on the channel. I hope you enjoy this video. Hello, in this video we are going to talk about Notification Center and I'll show you how you can use it in your own project. Now this demo right here isn't directly related to the app that we are building, but seeing as how in the previous lesson we did use Notification Center to handle the notification that was sent from the keyboard sliding up or down, I thought it would be interesting to do this separate demo to show you how to use Notification Center, um, not only how to receive notifications like we did in the previous lesson, but also how to send notifications. And this will give you another tool in your arsenal to facilitate communication between objects rather than only using the delegate and protocol pattern. Now I do tend to like the delegate and protocol pattern more and I will tell you why at the end of the video. So first of all let's work on this Xcode project. It's a brand new project. Um, it's a single view application. I haven't done anything to it yet. but. In the view to load, let's listen for a notification which we're going to create. So register to listen for a notification. And we use uh, notification center dot remember default. Just like when we use user defaults, uh, we're going to use add observer here. For the observer, we're going to say self selector. We're going to skip that for now. And for this name, now that we're not handling a specific notification from the keyboard, uh, we can make up any name that we want. This is going to be our custom notification. So you go ahead and type nsnotification.name, and then it has an initializer method where you can pass in a string. Now I'm not sure what the difference is between these two. The parameters look the same. I think they basically are the same thing. And let's call this notification test. Now you would probably call it something more descriptive. And again, uh, you can listen for this notification from a specific object and only handle that case. But I'm going to put nil and it's going to listen for this notification no matter uh, which object sends it. Okay, so down here, let's create a function. Uh, I'm gonna call it notified. You'd probably want to relate it to the notification, actually. So, you know what? Let's let's give it a a better name here. Let's say, for example, we've been downloading data from the model, 
and then the model has been uh, has has had to notify the view controller back so we can do something like data downloaded or something like that so this function let's call it um, data downloaded notification or maybe I wanted to type something like data downloaded notification received but that's kind of too long for my liking you know what I'm just gonna leave it like this as data downloaded it's descriptive enough and also I'm going to create a parameter for the notification just like we did in the previous lesson um, okay so now we can go back up here and use autocomplete on our selector so hash or pound selector and I'm gonna start typing data downloaded let autocomplete find it and then press enter so here I've registered to listen for the data downloaded notification and it's going to trigger my data downloaded function okay so now we need uh, let's print a statement here print uh, triggered now we need a way to send that notification right here okay so I'm gonna go in the storyboard and I'm gonna trigger the sending of it via this button here let's just center it now obviously this is a trivialized example because you know why would you want to click a button and send a notification right okay so I mean you can use okay let's do it from here so I don't accidentally add a constraint as the let's do action here uh, let's do button tapped connect okay So, in order to send it, we would also use notification center dot default dot post, and we're going to use this one here, where we can specify um, a name for the notification and also an object. So here you see this user info dictionary. Uh, and remember how when we received the keyboard notification, it had a user info dictionary which contained um, a bunch of keys and a bunch of values that told us, you know, where the keyboard would slide up to and how fast it was animating. Well, you would use this one if you wanted to pass some information like a dictionary that contained some info. And then uh, the receiver, when you receive that notification, you can get this user info dictionary out. But I'm going to use this one, which does not include that parameter, because I just want um, simply to trigger my data downloaded function there. So this is the important part. For the notification name that I'm going to send, it must, you know, it's got to be this one right here. So nsnotification.name.init. And as long as this string matches, it's going to trigger now this object here again there's an object parameter and this allows you to target a specific object to send this notification to so if I if I put an object reference here into this parameter it's only going to send this notification to that object but if I put nil it's going to broadcast it so let's do that let's run the project now when I tap on that button it should fire off this notification called data downloaded and because this same object has registered to listen for it um, it's going to trigger this function and then print out triggered in the console of course this demo this example is kinda of trivial like I could have just made this function call right um, ideally you would use this sort of paradigm across um, across different classes so that you know an object can send a message to another object to trigger something to happen so let me tap on this button and you can see that it prints out triggered down here in the console you know so you know doing this example you might think that oh this is a lot easier than than doing the delegate protocol pattern well why don't I use notifications for everything so I'll tell you why um, the reason is because there's so much freedom 
that it could be very hard to debug. So the delegate and protocol pattern is good for use um, in a one-to-one -one relationship. Right? You have one object that needs to talk to another. For example, the table view, right? The view controller owns the table view, so the table view would only ever need to talk to the view controller. Now for notification center using this, it's good for a one-to-many sort of relationship. So uh, imagine that we have a multiplayer game or something like that, and the game server needs to broadcast the message out to all of the game clients that are connected to the server while all of the, the clients would have registered to receive notifications from the server so the server would only have to do something like this and post a notification or broadcast it and then every single one of those game clients would receive that message and then do something whatever that may be so that's why it's harder to debug because you can send out a notification, you can broadcast it, and you don't know, you know, where in your app which objects have registered to listen for it. There could be one, there could be multiple, and it could be anywhere. So you would probably have to just take this uh, notification value and do a project-wide search for it when you're debugging. So it, I mean, it's possible to debug, but it just makes it a little more you know, it's, it's a wider net that you have to cast and there's more things that you have to look at because the communication can be going anywhere and anybody could be listening for that notification. Whereas with the delegate and protocol uh, pattern, there's only one object subscribed as the delegate, you know, for another object and then it needs to conform to that protocol. It's easy. It's easy to troubleshoot and debug. Anyways, I hope that opens up some possibilities for you. And like I said, if you don't want to use delegate and protocol patterns at all, you can use notification center for everything. Um, just be warned that there is a potential for it to get really messy. So thanks for watching. In the next lesson, we're going to resume our guidebook app.